Yeah, yeah. I have to come on mic to try to talk through some of this pain. Yeah. I had my second round of radiation today. Put me into an attack. Can't control, uh, can't control my, uh, hot or cold. I'm having a fiber drink. And you know, the fiber all settles down to the bottom, so it starts pumping up. Um, so, you know that saying that some people can have body quakes that are so severe that they literally break their own bones. Huh? I can so relate. I can so relate. That is so miserable. So I don't understand. Um, my symptoms are not, they're not lifting <laughs> from my, uh, my, whatever they call it, Vena Kama. <coughs> Uh, sorry, I um, I think he did it as a ruse to get me onto radiation, saying it'll give me relief instead of giving me the stent. And now that I'm miserably in the radiation, uh, it is miserable. Uh, who wants a stent? Well, I do. I do. I want to relieve all this pressure. All this misery, and then let me deal with the pain from there. For Christ's sake, the pain is just chest pain. It's not like I haven't had my heart hurt a thousand times in a thousand years. <laughs> Certainly. And uh, <clears throat> I can get over that sort of thing. Hold on one second. Yeah, I know it wants to spit up. But it hasn't come up yet. And yesterday, when I got done, it was a really bloody, bloody sputum. I don't know why there's hard chunks in this this time. Maybe I didn't stir it fast enough. Six chunks on the bottom. So today's the 13th, Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of crazy people on the road today. You driving like Haitians around here, you know? <laughs> And uh, you got to be careful. So I'm convinced that the radiologist, the guy, yeah, the doctor, Dr. Call, is a fallen angel. Yeah, because if you were an angel and you fell down, what would be the perfect job for you? Radiology. <laughs> Dealing with the lumens, the lumens, yeah. And uh, he looks very young and uh, very fit and uh, very single. I don't know why, but I think the secretary has the hot one because she looks like a, I don't know, a, uh, an albino version of Elvira. Yeah, the mistress of the dark, but she's an albino like platinum, weird white hair, white skin. Very strange. And I watched him today, and I was like, whoa. Yeah, you go, secretary. You snag yourself a daddy. <laughs> so I have to be nice to him, because he, if he's a fallen angel, you know, I don't want to be on his bad side. And I don't want him to know who I am in that case, because he has been giving me the eye. Like, what the hell are you? They should be going through this. Yeah. Oh, well. I really shouldn't be going through this, but I'm going to have to anyways. Uh, I guess in, in order to fulfill the suffering servant. Sure, why not? And uh, this is very difficult. Um, it hurts. It hurts really bad. You know, they go right through the center of my chest and then right through each side, just like this line going right across. That's where they're focused on. And they gave me a drawing. See the drawing? It's like a set of lungs and a big old massive chunky something growing in there. So do you see that? <laughs> they drew it on my chest with 
tattoo ink. And then they told you they gave me tattoos. They actually took out the tattoo gun and went, they gave me a little dot exactly where they focus their x-ray, their super beam. Yeah, how weird. And for only being in, in the in the throes of it for like 30 minutes, 20 minutes tops. And then it's done. The machine does everything for them. It certainly racks the body badly. <laughs> At first, I'm delirious. Yeah. It's almost like an anesthesia, but I do remember that I take a gummy <laughs> just before. So when I come out of the machine, I'm a little gummied. So it's almost like anesthesia. I'm like, whoa. Start talking crazy stuff. But when I come home and I settle down and get in bed, or just try to sit in a chair and get comfortable, the pain just starts racking across my chest. But on top of it is all this con all this conge blood congestion. And I'm showing signs of edema right here. See how it wiggles like water? It's like there's water under the the skin. Yeah, it's edema. So I look all buff like I've been lifting weights and I've got these trapezes going on. <laughs> but it's just swelling. Yeah, it is. It's just swelling. It's very uncomfortable. It keeps me picking my nose. I'm not, I'm just wiping a little moisture because I just get, I just get so runny. Yeah. You know, all these things make me do that. If I lay down, stuffy. If I sit up, runny. <laughs> well, that's how it is. So Friday the 13th, how interesting. I keep running into the situation where I need to, I need to hold my emotions in check. You know, be strong about them. You know, come out, turn in that cheek. Yeah, I feel like I got roosted into this, but... And I'm not seeing the, the relief portion of it. And so now I'm on, I don't know what I counted, like 11 days right now. Um, symptomatic. And by the time I see him on Tuesday, it will be uh, 15 days that I, I will have been symptomatic with um, this Venus, Vena Cava syndrome. It's the uh, superior vena cava. And uh, practic practicality says, put a stent, get the flow, and you got the go. <laughs> easy, easy peasy. So I'm a little miffed, and I'm going to have to hold my emotions over it. Yeah, yeah. Because I can sometimes say things in a way that it sounds like I'm yelling when I'm only trying to get my point across. And then I interrupt because I don't want to hear their opinion if they're not going to listen to mine, especially given that I'm, I'm a patient. So my insurance company was so kind to call me today and uh, asked me if I needed anything. I uh, wanted to go over some of the benefits that would be more like <laughs> in-house care and I was like no, no 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 I'm not there yet I'm not ready for that I mean give me another week but I told him that I was feeling good because the radiation and plus the thing and he was going to go look it up and I just explained it to him what it was so well he asked I asked him to call me back because I do have things that I need hospital equipment, things like that, that could present helping me in some fashion. <clears throat> if I can get them to listen to me. I have experience in the healthcare industry. Uh, when I left San Antonio in 96 and went to El Paso, I immediately started uh, training as a nurse aide. And I graduated from Emerald Nursing School. And I went to work at Horizon uh, hospital, which was acute, subacute, sort of, we'll take all your junk, sort of hospital. We'll take your sick, you're dying, you're hungry, you're poor. Yeah. 
and they were, it was all run by Filipinos at the time. And it was absolutely fun. It was fun. I was in shape. I was young. Actually, uh, there's a picture of me up there. The tall, the one highest. Of me and Jeff. And that was in around 96. When I was going to school. Just finishing. And, uh, yeah, I uh, spent three years doing that as a nurse's aide. So carrying a person to the toilet or moving them from the bed to, to you know, to take showers, baths, all the works and the wound care and then watching them leave or watching them come, watching them leave. Yeah, it was very interesting. That's where I honed my skills with numerology. Uh, I had been taught the basics, but I didn't have, I didn't have uh, the experience with all the people. And so as a nurse's aide, uh, taking care of patients, and I would say there was probably about a, a, a patient load of 50 on our floor. Yeah, it was full. And uh, that's with rehab. And so we weren't having to take care of everybody. Some were just there for rehab. And know there's not enough for strokes and stuff like that. So they have the full staff for them. Um, occupational and speech pathology, things like that. They had everybody. And, uh, yeah, it was hard work. It was very hard work. And uh, it changed my life. And then from there, I went on to Houston and uh, started working for Prudential healthcare as a pre-cert technician. So it's just behind the desk. I enjoyed that too. So I do have a medical background. And then of course the transcription work. Went to college to become a transcriptionist with a medical emphasis. So my even though it's office technologies, it's not technologies because back then there was no technology and but uh, as far as the medical uh, portion of it, the emphasis of medical, yeah, that was put in there as a designer package so I could become a transcriptionist. And then lo and behold, it all went electronic. <laughs> so I got phased out. I always choose that, you know. It's like during the 80s, I went to school to become a welder. And then through Reaganomics, the oil, the price of oil just burst through the sky. And jobs were people being laid off. And that was just terrible. There was no jobs. So much for becoming a welder. Of course, I eventually joined the Air Force and continued uh, welding in the Air Force. And then when I left the Air Force, when I um, went to work for an answering service, and I loved that job. That was so fun. I could actually do that now if I, if I didn't have to deal with bilingual bullshit. Because, you know, speak English, this is America. But um, I uh, then went on to uh, work for um, car tech manufacturing, where I built... Uh, custom made turbo systems for racing applications. They used it on the street though. They say racing applications, but I think that's just a safety wording or whatever. You drive it on the street at your own risk. <laughs> but um I was only with Corky Bell maybe maybe five maybe five years. Yeah. So, yeah, it was to build turbo systems for race cars. Yeah, that was weird. That didn't turn out so good. Then I used to do pottery with an artist. But then she accused me of stealing a, a piece of her work that I actually made. But it was missing, and she thought I took it. And I didn't. She had a house kiss that weekend, too. But she was going to put full blame on me to cover her friend. So that she didn't embarrass her friend. So. 
that's so bad. I still feel bad about that. Because I would have made a really good artist. I would have just went on and did my own thing with the help of her. As, a, as, a, as an apprentice, like you would learn underneath such a masterful artist. To have her uh, blame me because her friend stole from her. I think her friend picked up the vase and broke it and got scared and hid it. Took it somewhere off somewhere and hid it. But it doesn't matter if it's broken because we'd still get value out of it. But um, in resale. But um, yeah, Atlanta was upset. Atlanta Perkins. I was in San Antonio before I came here. Before I came to El Paso, before I became a nurse's aide. So um, I listened to this little old man tonight. He was going off about if you're in chemo and treatments, radiation. You're already in the dying stage. And, you know, death is, death is pain. And, uh, yeah, so if you experience pain, you're experiencing death. So we're constantly in the dying phase in our lives. And there's still opportunity to, to extend the life so as to, to pull in a little bit more experience. One of those experiences is to finally see us walk through this ridiculous um, voting, this ridiculous presidential election. Um, you know they're up to no good. You know that they're going to pull anything in their in their means to uh, take over and then to subjugate us with this pretend measurement of this is all our promises and they never they never fulfill. No, no one worked as hard as Trump did. That man worked around the clock when he was president. He loved it. He's built for it. He's the kind of man that's built for that job. Not that floozy girl. No. And the shame of American families who are sitting in their basement believing the media. Because they have never branched beyond it, have they? No. They just believe what the media feeds to them. And so you know that whole anti-Semite media owned, operated, and fulfilled by the B system. Well, congratulations. Those poor families are unable to make a decision. Because you feed narratives to them and falsehoods and lies. Yep. And you're it's all a cabal situation, as it is a crime family. It's a cabal, though. You know, the DNC, the AD situation, and what's been going on since that Sills, Silsby woman. Yeah, I think we didn't forget about that. Yeah, with Hillary Clinton. It's not that hard. See, these things I want to see fulfill. I want to see the ending result of their... Their ill-gotten booties come right on their booties. Yeah, to justify our ability to rise up and stand as a nation once again. Yeah. Carrying a torch, if but for our own eternity. Anybody else can just get behind us. Then dump the uh, Jezebel spirit and dump the harlot, which is democracy, that which rides upon the beast. It's socialism as it is Marxism. And uh, she's drunk. She's all adorned, purple and scarlet, and all the finest jewels, pearls, and gold cups. Yeah, we know who they are. democracy yep and then they wear a little crown in front of you to make it look like they were, we really are just a monarchy no you aren't that man's just a puppet he's just a figurehead and 
and uh, yeah, he's pretty grotesque, isn't he? He takes peace from the world. And I think Netanyahu is the one that brings violence on the world. And uh, so whoever that pale horseman wants to ride, it could be Kim Jong-un, or it could be the Xinping Ding, or anybody else that's the pale horseman would be through the Asian race. Yeah. As a totalitarian, but spreading poison, the likes of which kills and destroys. It's nice that we have a racist book, such as the book of Revelation, showing us our own natures of who we truly are as we stand as to whether or not we're pure to one race or another, or mixed, that we should inherit the sins of many fathers and express them so violent people are just naturally born that way. Sure, as children, they're innocent, but it overcomes them. The sins of the father come through the genetics. And now they've changed it with the mRNA. They've added another sequence in there of the father's presentation. It gets very thick at the bottom. It's like a jelly sort of very um, little, little pearls, balls of jelly or something. But it certainly does make for good stools and easy to go. Although I have been a little bound up since my application. That happens when the body's assaulted upon, your digestion wants to stop. And it takes a while to get things moving. That's what I went through in the chemo. And I don't look forward to chemo again. And I think I'm going to put my foot down this time. You know, here I am, choo, choo, choo. Like, sure, you're going to do that. You didn't do it last time. But I guess I needed this extra help. But I do need a stent. And by Tuesday, if this isn't addressed and eliminated, I need relief. Because 15 days is too much on the heart. I need relief, and my heart rate goes up, and there's this blood pressure goes up, and then I start to pass out. I lose my eyesight, I lose my hearing, can't swallow, and then I start having an attack of breathlessness in a body that can't control hot or cold. One second I'm stripped out of these clothes and into shorts and a light shirt, Standing under the air conditioning, sweating. The next minute, I'm shaking like a leaf and I can't control it. Oof. Yeah, it's bad. So then I get back in my jammies. I actually got my treatment in my jammies. You know, I had just had to take shirt off, but I got my treatment. I just went there, showed up in pajamas. I wasn't going to get any clothes. And that's how it's going to be next week. All next week is the same thing. And I'm going to have to go into infusion after radiation. And so I'll probably have an attack there on the floor. It's a really bad thing. They have to get, they have to get me blankets. They'll have to, I'll make all kinds of noise and scare people. Yeah. Jolt of pain just in my chest. It's like a heart attack. But it's basically the, Cancer, uh, opening up those passages that haven't been opened in a while, and so then they hurt. Can't believe I'm not on oxygen for the evening. Just you know, like one pound of oxygen, one psi pound per square inch, just to relax the body. Yeah, because it works. Oxygen does wonderful things to the body. And I would like to have my blood oxygenated for Christ's sake. You know, have some blood flow. Okay, that's enough complaining, right? Yeah, I'm not going to have any dinner tonight.
just my uh, fill me up, uh, yeah, whatever it is, the fiber. <laughs> my brain's not working. No, it's too much pressure. I need relief. Yeah, my arms, they hurt. And if you ever wrap a rubber band around your finger and then you let it go dead, that's what my arms feel like. And then when you go to bend them, it hurts. And even when you take the rubber band off and it starts coming back and it hurts, that's what my arms feel like. All my arms, because they're so tight and backed up. And they're not edemic because, like this is right here, they were yesterday. But today they're fine. Um, they're just plump. And uh, that's because I'm dehydrated, which isn't good because I haven't drinking enough water. And uh, then I'll try to drink more. And by Tuesday, I'll be hydrated. I'll do the infusion. And they'll give me a pint, or I'm sorry, a quart. It's a quart. Yeah, and they, they took, gave me two quarts last time. I don't know how much you can take, but I don't want to go with it because I don't have a damage cellular structure. I don't like this puppy, this, this waterlogged crappy shit. And the collarbones hurt so bad. But it's all connected, and I, I know how to fix it. Give me my scalpel. Give me a stent. They would go in through the shoulder and down through the heart. And they would open up this, they would insert the stent, and then the stent would be released, and it would open up, providing a wider passage. And it would all just naturally flow. And within probably 12 hours, my face would go to normal, my neck would go to normal, everything would go to normal. But since they're hitting me with radiation right here, I think that it might affect the stent or the vena cava itself with that new placement, you know, an irritation. And so he's trying to hold off on it because he doesn't want to cause more damage. And then after this radiation and he gets what he wants, then Ron can have what he wants if he can prove that he's getting better. But then how many days will I have presented then? That's so wrong. Where's the palliative care? Where's the humanitarianism? The patient should never have to suffer like that. No. So that's what I have to deal with on Tuesday. And Jeff was supposed to be with me this past time, but they really screwed us over and they must have known he was in the lobby because they didn't bring me in until 12 noon. And it wasn't until he walked out that front door that they called me in. I mean, that seems so obvious. Like, you don't want the caregiver in there because you know that Ron's going to say no more. <laughs> and he wants to save my life, I guess. Because it's good for his records. <laughs> I would hope. I hope he's not, like, part of the fallen angel guy. You have to be careful with that. I don't want to step on that guy's toes. He's already given me strange looks. And I asked him, I said, who do I turn to? Do I turn to your staff? Yep. <laughs> do not turn to my staff. <laughs> so I don't came and complain, although I did test them today about some things that they didn't know what I was talking about. Because so I knew that just just shush. They're just techs. They're following their machine's orders to do what they do. They don't know why it hurts so bad. They don't know what you can do to make yourself feel better. They can only do the machine. <laughs> so, yeah, leave them alone. Turn to my uh, oncologist and their nursing staff. Yeah. Okay. I wish I had a big fat pie or cake or sweets. I do. I have been craving sugar like no tomorrow, but I'm restricting it. I am totally restricting it. Uh, no sugar today. And anything that has you know sugar in it, like fruit, fruit juice, things like that, more naturals. But uh, none of the refined sugar and no sweets, no chocolates. Yeah, because I gained too much weight, but not only that, it feeds the cancer, you know it does. 
I know it does. But that's why I reach for it, because my body's craving it. Oh, crave it, crave it. Feed me, feed me. But now I have to cut it off. Yeah. And i already gone to another set of gummies. I can't believe it, because I've been double with them. Instead of taking one gummy, I take two together. Yeah, so 20 gummies only last, what, 10 days? But not really 10 days. That's doing it once. I'm taking it two or three times a day. Yeah, so uh, I'm done for the day. And uh, I won't take another gummy till tomorrow, because i got to go over to the, some moss buds and get some more gummies. And besides, she hadn't seen me for a while, and hopefully I'm having the strength to be up and at them to go visit. Yeah. That was nice. Because tomorrow we're hunting for a uh, a recliner, a recliner chair that can go in the living room. Something that when I can't sleep in here and I'm uncomfortable and I, I'm trying to prop up in bed, and, I, and I, I'm in so much pain that I can't quite get the, the angle of the dangle. <clears throat> to get rest and to relieve the pressures and so uh, yeah I need to get a recliner chair that can go in the living room and then I can just go out there and just crash and get some good sleep and then uh, till this is over I can sleep fl flat again but right now I can't sleep flat so I need a recliner it's too hard to just prop up pillows because by the morning I'll slip right down, and then on my then my neck is all crunched in, and then it's terrible. So yeah, complainer. What can I just say? I need one of those suspension, uh, those whatever, you know, where it cuts off your your um, sensory deprivation tank. Yeah, a sensory deprivation tank that I could just, I could just float in the saline, you know, because it, you just naturally float, so you just kick back, and you let every muscle just relax. In the saline, that would be so nice. Yeah, maybe with a little bit of music for imaginatory purposes. Otherwise, the music will step right in with me. My head's all full of music, and if I'm alone, I'll hear music. I'll hear. I'll start singing to the songs, just playing in my head. I noticed lately that there's a lot of paradelia going on. No matter where I could look, in the curtains, in the clouds, in the trees, on the floor, I see faces, faces everywhere. Yeah, I guess that's part of the dying process too, isn't it? Probably is. Probably is. So today as a 13, which was a 4, um, uh, with the eight creates the 12. So the 12 in its own right being, you know, noon to midnight is a pinnacle. So it's a tower. It's a tower. The 12 represents a tower as it does represent the 12 tribes. As they rise up, they shall be as a tower, a great tower, or as Zion is understood. But the tower moment is struck. Yeah, just like midnight is struck. 12 noon. And uh, so it's power of the tower and then the emotion base. So it's a lot of containment. It is a lot of containment. And I could see how people were driving today like maniacs and how frustrating it was. It seems like at the clinic and for other people, especially, and the seats were so hard and everything was so miserable. Where at the infusion center, everything's so soft, everything's so comfy and nice and inviting, and there's sweets, there's sodas, there's TV, and there's recliners, and you can rest and sleep while you're going through infusion, and there's curtains, but down the other one, it's all very clinical, and it's hard, hard seats, hard surfaces, cold, hard, hard, and they clamp you in, and zap you up and there's no decorations around the nurse's station or the front reception it's all just very clean and it's really, it's just very much like a fallen angel and just the fact that his last name dr paul <laughs> that reminds me of seth plate 
you know, City of Angels. So they were going to be Mrs. and Mrs. Plate because he couldn't figure out a last name to tell her. So his name is Seth Plate. <laughs> well, that's how I feel that this fallen angel, he chose his calling. Yeah. Yeah. Using radiation. Very appropriate for an angel. It's been a while. Yeah, I pick up on it from him. Yeah. His personality and the way his eyes and the way they look at me. As they evaluate, and I have to meet him every Thursday, so it's kind of like a, a treat. Yeah, it'll be a treat. Yeah, because I've been discussing that stuff with him, and I probably won't, because he's very particular. He has a whole list of protocols, and these are rules of his office. And if you don't follow him, he will he will discharge you. He'll tell you go away. It's really weird. Probably because he doesn't want to be found out. You know, he's new to the earth and he really wants to make a, a good impression yeah and he just fell right into his career because he's an angel sure maybe i'll mention him to the other nurses see what they think they should know him you know because he i've seen him come up before yeah okie dokie that's a good talk that helped exercise my lungs a little bit thank you very much and it helped, uh, yeah, it helped a little bit. Big cry at me heard a little bit. Okay, hopefully I can make it through tonight. And then I have two days reprieve, so two days to relax. And hopefully I won't have any more attacks tomorrow. I have a normal day. And then get to Monday, and then that's five day cycle. And by then, I think each one builds on itself. So each day it gets worse and worse and worse. I can only imagine. Having spent two days, and this is what it feels like, I can't imagine getting past three days. Ah, that murder. That's murder. Spitting of blood. That's murder. Okay. Take care. And talk soon. Eventually, I'll get outside and share the backyard so you can see how terrible it is. It's completely decimated. Okay. Bye.